Hello everyone, Mr. Popo here, and welcome to this new video where I take you throughout how I composited and how I made the device and put the UI into it and what went through my mind and how I went about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like the video if you actually like it. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this and more tutorials about After Effects and Cinema 4D, probably more in the future. But right now, let's just jump right into it. Now, before we start doing anything, um, let's just take a look on exactly what I created. So this was the final result of what I'm gonna be explaining today. So basically you have a device and you have a composited uh, UI animation, which um, you can already check the tutorial um, that I just posted before this video and learn to how to actually animate this inside of After Effects, not Figma, not XD, After Effects. So that's pretty cool. Now, how did we do this? First, before we start talking about After Effects, we'll have to talk about what happened. So the first thing was, I like to create the animation in the UI, and then after that, come and um, actually create a device for it, or where it stands. I don't like to just put the UI like that, and I was like, all right, cool, you got a, um, uh, you've got a, a cool animation in UI, yay, let's go. I don't like to just show the UI like this. I like to present it and give it enough love um, as it deserves. So what I did first was I animated this and then I'm like, okay, what kind of device do I look, do I see this on? So I went, I turned on uh, Moi 3D and I was watching a stream, uh, Motion North with the Richard Studio. And uh, while that thing was happening, I was just, you know, scribbling a device. I started with uh, it looking like a phone and then I, started designing it in my 3D, you know, giving it uh, a little bit of kind of options that I see um, this device actually having if it was to be real. Um, and I gave myself the whole stream time. So whatever the stream, how long it is gonna be, that's when I'm gonna stop editing this device. So the stream I think went on for a few hours, uh, I think an hour and a half. And uh, I really enjoyed the stream and uh, I was just, doing this and it was a lot of fun just you know just adding more details as the stream is going on you know and uh, it was pretty good um, I had a lot of fun creating this so when I finished I exported this into um, cinema 4d now this is how the scene looks like inside of cinema and I have two cameras because I was thinking first into doing this but then I wanted to show the whole UI instead of just having this view I wanted to show the whole UI because that was my main reason why I created this device. And probably I was thinking that maybe this will be another frame and add more cameras and do more and more frames. So this is how I like to start um, and work uh, with my, um, whenever I have this kind of uh, product presentation. So what I do first is I import, I import the device. As you can see here, I import it and then I put a background, um, a ground below it. Uh, the ground um, basically uh, is just a plane with uh, like a silver material, uh, nothing too complicated. The only thing that I was very keen on doing is adding a little bit of roughness. Uh, as you can see here, if, uh, if we go here, okay, so this is the ground, uh, take a look at that. If I don't have any roughness, it's gonna be so reflective and you're just gonna see the device doubled. And uh, I think that was not really not cool. And if I add just a little bit, I still can see it and I don't really catch the feeling of this device is really important and like military kind of thing. But I didn't want it to be super dirty and military and like forceful. I, I want it to be like a futuristic, say, clean. Um, I like to do clean designs. Uh, instead of like all these details and grungy and fingerprints and ever I like things to be clean um, So that was my main idea. So what I did I cracked up this a bit so that I don't see the reflection anymore uh, This was the ground material. It's just as simple as this um, When it comes to the device itself the device is made of uh, when I exported it from my 3d as I was designing it I made sure that I have different elements uh, separated. So for example here the screws they have this um, Copper, I literally just went here and chose copper. I didn't do anything anymore. Uh, I didn't change anything at all. I applied it on the other screw. And uh, also when it comes to the screen, I made sure I put a um, uh, glass material. When you put a glass material, um, this is what you get. 
But the thing that you don't get uh, that I added was this thing here. Normally, uh, if we put this into default, it's just gonna be like this. But I felt like it doesn't have that kind of texture that I was looking for. I was looking for like Game Boy, you're taking a Switch or you're taking a Game Boy. Uh, I was looking for that kind of texture. So I went and I added a little bit of dispersion, how the light disperses on the screen uh, instead of just being flat like a glass. This is not a glass, this is, um, this is a screen, like this is like a Nintendo Switch or something, a kind of technology. I wanted something that is not futuristic. I wanted something that actually exists now. Uh, I didn't put any button for a very simple reason. Who uses buttons anymore? I mean, when you look at your phone, uh, there's literally no buttons. And uh, that's why I didn't put a button there as well. Um, so I thought that this is gonna be actually um, just a normal screen. Saying that, once I have all this, I started, what I started to do is I started to add some lights. Okay, so this is how I start. And then I'm like, okay, cool, time to add some lights. Uh, I always start with um, doing a dome light. The dome light will have a HDRI picture that I then keep on turning uh, around like this. So I keep on turning until I get the kind of light that I want, depending on what kind of mood do I want to feel. Again, I was looking for something that will just bring up the glory um, of the UI. So nothing too uh, extreme. I don't want you to look so much into the device. The device is not that important. It's the UI animation that is important. Uh, and then I went and I did the three point lighting. Um, the, the main light, which is this one, uh, this one here, uh, I went and I did it in blue to give that calm feeling. I don't want you to feel like you're in war or you are somewhere really serious. So it's just blue color to just make you feel all right and at ease. And then I added this uh, little thing here. Um, uh, this is the light that is right in front of um, this one here. Uh, this is the light that is in front of the camera. The reason I use this is for a very simple reason. I wanted to see the highlights here better anything that is super dark i don't like it uh, i like to bring up a bit the darkness i don't like something to be 100 percent dark or else why did i even design it um i like my object to be lit in but not too much not overblown so yeah this is what i did and then i went and i rendered this um inside of redshift um i used the uh, simple uh, samples because I knew that I'm going to be editing this so I'll hide anything that doesn't look good um, so I don't need to spend too much time in this I use brute force to make sure I get correct uh, dispersion on the screen because to me the most important thing about this whole scene is the screen it's the screen that needs to be clear and uh, that's what I did so once all that done I went inside of After Effect. So inside of After Effect, I started importing everything. And um, one of the things that I did was this is how I imported it inside of After Effect without any effect. Um, I just imported uh, the picture like this. And what I did was I imported the uh, device uh, Cinema 4D file and I went and I extracted the camera from it. Now I can literally just delete this because I don't need it anymore because I just wanted this camera. And I put this UI uh, as a 3D and uh, yeah, I just uh, scale it down and put it right there because everything now is, the camera is doing everything for me. So that's cool. Um, the next thing that I did was I added, I duplicated it so that I can show that there is a screen depth. Um, so that's what I did there. Um, I added a screen depth and I changed the color from uh, white to blue because a screen you don't really see things um, uh, like uh, especially with the the, 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 the the nature of the screen um, it's not super white uh, white but it's gonna be a little bit blue because later on we'll, you'll see when I'm gonna do the color correction you'll see that the, the whole screen is gonna become bluish and it doesn't make sense that the bright spots here are blue but then here it's white it doesn't make sense uh, it should follow the color correction and that's why I changed it here as you can see it into blue I made sure that I uh, put this into screen because when you put something on your screen obviously it is has to be screened it's a screen so you have to screen it um, 
Yeah, that's it. Uh, I went and I did this uh, uh, here to give it a look that it's a screen. I went and I added a Venetian blind, as you can see here. Uh, hold on. So Venetian blind gives you this effect of screen. And uh, in the same time, what I did was I, I did a glow, but the glow, I went and I increased the radius so that it fills the screen so that you can have that feeling of like, oh, it's actually illuminated. It's not just a picture on top. All right. That said, let's go to the big beast. All right. So what's happening here? Let me just uh, turn off everything. So um, if you're not familiar with my tutorials, you should go and watch the Cinema 4D uh, glass looking uh, or go look for some RGB chromatic aberrations. Uh, there are millions of tutorials out there about After Effects chromatic aberrations. So what I did, I did a chromatic aberration here, but I did it in my own way. I'm not gonna go too in detail about that because you don't need to know that because the kind of thing that I did here was just because of this picture. Uh, I don't do it all the time. It's just, this is what I found. So I did the chromatic aberration trick and then I started with, a, with the first thing first, a vignette. So the reason I use the vignette is because I don't want you to look at parts where you don't need to look. Like, why would you look here? Why would you look somewhere else? Like, you just need to look at the screen. That's all I want you to do. And that's what I did with the vignette here. So the vignette is just a black solid with a faded opacity and uh, faded masks. So you can only see outside of the mask, which is uh, here is the black and here is the bright spot. This is where the viewer needs to see. Uh, after this, I went directly and I added a blur. And as you can see here, all these noises that I had on the screen are gone because I blurred it. Because again, I knew that I'm gonna be blurring it and I knew that I wanted to focus on the center. So the blur is just to help you focus in the center with the vignette. All right. Now, the next thing that I did was I went and I added a little bit of color correction. The first thing that you'll see me adding always is grain. All right, let's start with that. So in the beginning, the, this whole picture is too clean. And when you take a picture in real life, there is no such thing as this too clean. There's always these grains uh, in the air uh, because of pollution. So I went and I added a little bit of grain to give it this texture. Uh, again, without it and with it, it's just so little. All right. And then I went and I did some color correction with some curves. I knew that I wanted to go for a bluish kind of look. Again, I want this to be chill. I don't want this to be fighting or anything. Um, yeah. And then I added one more thing, which is the LUT here. Basically, uh, what a LUT does is that it just colors your picture according to a LUT file. So for example, here, I have a bunch of LUT, LUT files. LUT files are this kind of, um, it's like these color correction uh, presets. Uh, for example, tension green. Uh, let's go for tension green. It's gonna be like that, but it's not gonna be exactly like this because I went into 25%. So this is 100%. Uh, let's go for, for example, edgy amber. Let's go for example, for 3D strip. You see, so it's like, there's a bunch of looks to take to take from. And there are hundreds and millions of LUTs out there. So you can just find. But the thing that I want you to focus on uh, when, I was, um, when I was doing this is I want you to know that it's n you should not just stop there. It's like, oh no, it doesn't look good, but I really like the kind of effect, but it's just too much. No, you can always decrease the opacity of that adjustment layer. So yeah, and that's how I made, that's how I made this. Thank you so much for watching the video. And uh, I hope this was very helpful to you in some sort of way. Um, again, if you like this video, make sure you like it because it helps me uh, send this message to more people. Subscribe, share it with some friends if you feel like it, or if you're in a Reddit or a Discord group and you think that they will benefit from this video. Uh, just let them know. I do exist on Instagram. Yes, I live there as well, uh, at Butaib uh, I'll put everything in the description below. Uh, you can get the project file um, on the description uh, below. And I would like to thank Dennis for uh, letting me uh, animate this and uh, make a tutorial about it. 
I'll put the link to his portfolio below. He's an amazing and talented UI artist. You guys should definitely check his Beyonce. Uh, he's got some mind-blowing things that I still don't know how they are made and uh, I'm discovering. My name is Mr. Popo and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. This is so lame. Just pause the video.